You know, I said, I told one just come round. I said, Peter, I said, you, you got dead tonight. So you know, but I said, nothing. Be complicated, yo. Known as the Stepping Razor, Peter Tosh embodied a rebellious spirit. Jamaica have been living under this colonial, imperialistic situation. His music often challenged authority and the status quo, making him a symbol of resistance against oppression. Peter Tosh was fearless in expressing his opinions and advocating for what he believed in. He was unapologetically uncompromising when it came to his principles and his music, which earned him a reputation as a staunch rebel. Tosh was a passionate advocate for social justice, equality, and human rights. He used his music and his platform to address issues such as racial discrimination. Many times being humiliated by police and brutalized just because of my political stand or my political views, which is truth and rights. See? See, because every man supposed to know what is his or her right. When a man don't know that, what's the reason living? Peter Tosh so was born Winston Hubert McIntosh in Westmoreland, the westernmost parish of Jamaica. He was abandoned by his parents and shuffled among relatives. When McIntosh was 15, his aunt died and he moved to Trenchtown in Kingston, Jamaica. Peter first learned guitar after watching a man in the country play a song that captivated him. He watched the man play the same song for half a day, memorizing everything his fingers were doing. He then picked up the guitar and played the song back to the man. The man then asked Peter who had taught him to play. Macintosh told him that he had. During the early 1960s, as an aspiring musician, Tosh went to vocal teacher Joe Higgs, who gave free music lessons to young people. Through his contact with Higgs, Tosh met Robert Nesta Marley, Bob Marley, and Neville O'Reilly Livingston, Bunny Whaler. He then changed his name to Peter Tosh, and the trio started singing together in 1962. Higgs taught the trio to harmonize, and while developing their music, they would often play on the street corners of Trenchtown. By 1964, Tosh, Marley, and Bunny had formed the Wailing Wailers, with falsetto singer Junior Braithwaite and backup singers Beverly Kelso and Cherry Smith. Initially, Tosh was the only one in the group who could play musical instruments. According to Bunny Whaler, Tosh was critical to the band because he was a self-taught guitarist and keyboardist, and thus became an inspiration for the other band members to learn to play. The Wailing Wailers had a major ska hit with their first single, Simmer Down, in late 1965. I was the first one in the group who played music. I used to play my guitar. I used to play the keyboards. I taught Bob to play guitar and I taught Bonnie to play guitar because it was a part of making your music perfect. See? And in those times, it's like we had a good voice but we wasn't creating music that much. It was just singing people's song and singing people's song and the people been telling us that we sound good, why don't go to the studio? During the mid-1960s, Tosh, along with Bob Marley and Bunny Whaler, were introduced to Danny Sims and Johnny Nash, who signed the three artists to an exclusive recording contract on Sims and Nash's JAD Records label, as well as an exclusive publishing agreement through Sims Music Publishing Company, came in music. Rejecting the up-tempo dance of ska, the band slowed their music to a rock-steady pace and infused their lyrics with political and social messages inspired by their newfound faith. The Wailers composed several songs for the American-born singer Nash before teaming with producer Lee Scratch Perry to record some of the earliest well-known reggae songs, including Soul Rebel. In 1973, Tosh was driving home with his girlfriend Yvonne when his car was hit by another car, driving on the wrong side of the road. The accident killed Yvonne and severely fractured Tosh's skull. After Island Records president Chris Blackwell refused to issue Peter's solo album in 1974, Tosh and Bunny Whaler left the Whalers, citing the unfair treatment they received from Blackwell, to whom Tosh often referred with a derogatory play on Blackwell's surname, Whitewurst. Peter Tosh had written many of the Whalers' hit songs, such as Get Up, Stand Up, 400 Years, Get Up, Sympathy. Stand Up. Tosh began recording and released his solo debut, Legalize It, in 1976 with CBS Records Company and Treasure Isle. Legalize it, yeah, yeah. I will advertise it. 
The title track soon became popular among endorsers of cannabis legalization, reggae music lovers, and Rastafari all over the world, and was a favorite at Tosh's concerts. Tosh started to make his own albums with Rolling Stones Records and CBS Records Equal Rights followed in 1977, featuring his recording of a song co-written with Marley, Get Up, Stand Up, and a cover of Stepping Razor that would also appear on the soundtrack to the film Rockers. Tosh organized a backing band, Word, Sound, and Power, who were to accompany him on tour for the next few years, and many of whom performed on his albums of this period. In 1978, the Rolling Stones record label Rolling Stones Records contracted with Tosh, on which the album Bush Doctor was released, introducing Tosh to a larger audience. The album featured Rolling Stones frontmen Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, and the lead single, a cover version of the Temptations song, Don't Look Back, was performed as a duet with Jagger. During Bob Marley's Free One Love Peace concert of 1978, Tosh lit a marijuana spliff and lectured about legalizing cannabis while blasting attending dignitaries Michael Manley and Edward Sega for their failure to enact such Talking legislation. Talking about pirates. You have a son like a pirate now, just come from America, all boat and with them camera and them TV business. To go do a, get rich off fire and I. But hear me now, man. I'm gonna make sure so you don't come talk to I know, cause I a lightning, I flash. I will, anywhere in the ends of the earth in the day, I flash lightning. So to make sure you don't come give me some, some good, good arguments argument about, about my, my rights. rights. See, See not not call on him. Him. Cause people eat off of head. head. Several months later, he was apprehended by police as he left Skateland Dance Hall in Kingston and was beaten severely bad while in police custody. Mystic Man, 1979, and Wanted Dread and Alive, 1981, followed, both released on Rolling Stones records. Tosh tried to gain some mainstream success while keeping his militant views, but was only moderately successful, especially when compared to Marley's achievements. I'm just a mystic man. In 1984, after the release of 1983 album Mama Africa, Tosh went into self-imposed exile, seeking the spiritual advice of traditional medicine men in Africa and trying to free himself from recording agreements that won't distributed his records in South Africa. Tosh had been at odds for several years with his label, EMI, over a perceived lack of promotion for his music. But I am glad you made mention of this. And I am also glad that representatives of EMI, my recording company, is here to hear you saying that bomb or clap because these All right, are the let's things... take it a step further and see how many copies are going to sell in Japan as compared to United States. I know that. See? Well, see? All these things are intentionally done to exploit the artists. See? When I but if the people want the video bad enough, believe me, they got it. <laughs> I got it to them. I don't even like hear them rascal thing there, but I don't even talk to them. It, but I am only glad you mentioned that, my dear, and thank you very much. Video is important for us. Yes, and they don't do nothing for that. I just have, I Peter Tosh also participated in the international opposition to South African apartheid by appearing at anti-apartheid concerts and by conveying his opinion in various songs like Apartheid, 1977, re-recorded 1987. Equal right. Peter Tosh seemed to be having a career revival. He was awarded a Grammy Award for Best Reggae Performance in 1987 for No Nuclear War, his last record. On the 11th of September, 1987, just after Tosh had returned to his home in Jamaica, a three-man gang came to his house on motorcycles demanding money. In the house that night were Peter Tosh and his common-law wife, Marlene Brown. They were entertaining drummer Carlton Santa Davis, a friend, Michael Robinson, and herbalist, Winston Doc Brown. Two other visitors were expected. 
Jeff Dixon, the popular local DJ known as Free Eye, and his wife Joy. Marlene Brown picks up the story. Friday night at about 8 o'clock. I was expecting Free Eye and his queen Joy. They were both coming over to spend the night with me and Peter. While waiting upstairs, I hear a knock at my gate. I was now upstairs with friends and one of Peter's musicians. I said to one of Peter, Bridget Michael, to go downstairs, let him fry because I'm expecting fry and joy. Michael now go downstairs, go through my door, saw one of Peter's friends coming through the gate, but dogs them rush him and rush back right through the gate. I saw that it was not Fry, but it was a, somebody who visited the yard regularly. Who was that somebody? A brother named Lepo. So he being a regular visitor now, I backed off the dogs and told him and his friends to come in, which they did. But and enter in this reception area. Two of them pulled guns and said, where is Peter? Let's lead them upstairs, march upstairs. And we enter the living room area now. They tell everyone, face down. And we all responded, face down. Then I said, tell one just come on. I said, Peter, I said, you, you got dead tonight. So you know, but I said, nothing be come for kill you. I read one come over to me and say, say yo, you got date tonight. So when the body say nothing, just give me all the US dollar when they bring come. Come I'm not killing her, but give me the US dollar first. So we said to them, say we don't have no money. We just come down, all we have is two hundred dollars. US, that's all Peter had in the house. So Peter give them the two hundred US dollar, tell them to take anything they want, search the house, take anything because we don't have the money, which Peter never had no money. Them search us, them have us there 15 minutes, them tell us to belly it. No, all of us got them home belly, man, because I never want to see them face, the other two guys. One of the gunmen, Dennis Lobon, known as Lepo, was a frequent visitor to the house since his release from prison. Then Lepo, him start to talk and say, you say, you Marlene, it's you, because it's not Marlene, from Peter, they with you. Peter, you used to come at jungle, come man, bad man. And now you make Peter stop it. I'm say to a damn lie. Everybody know that Bob Marley used to mind bad man, but not Peter Tosh. Peter Tosh is not that type of man. So not because no, Peter Tosh live with a woman who don't want to come to us things, say use me as a pastor. We say Peter don't want mine, you know, because that's what he wants. He always come and want Peter to support him because he walks to every musician here looking for support. Just like Peter Tosh house. Which I don't like him, so I always encourage Peter not to allow this boy to come to the house. Because I just don't like him. In the middle of this tense situation, Friay and his wife Joy arrived at the front gate. One of the gunmen let them in. So Fred was standing there and so started first say, belly to light them. So Fred was standing looking at space. Because I never realized and I couldn't believe what he was seeing, you know. So Fred was stand up shocked when the most. So I said, Fry, please, go down. It's something real. Go down. Fry, go down. I tell Joy, I said, Joy, come over this side. Come over to me, because I was now in the dark. So I tell Joy, I said, come sit down beside me in the dark. Free I know, dark, Peter was more like in the light, you know, to the stairs. And the seven of us lying on the ground there, still constantly asking for the money, US dollars or the, the chest that we have there and then we're there. Peter told them that they could search the house and take anything that they wanted. Anyway, they still insisted and one of them now said, take, take the machete now. I said, well, let him go and chop off Peter's head. Sister Marlene showed to him that he can't do that. And it's like, one of them now starts to say, um, you know, come with us deal with or come for deal with, like, you know? We had to argue with the man. We don't argue, argue with the man. You know, we just deal with or come for deal with. And then the fire, I uh, opened fire, the fire, a single shot first that caught Marlene in her head. And then fire two more shots at Peter in his head. And then they just opened up a barrage of shots. 
on us lying on the ground. There was a piece of black furniture right beside my head that gave me my head a dark look. It picked up five. My mother before I pick up all of them. So when them things to me did, them start fire. Then when I turn, them start fire again. Watch me, she said me no move. Then was turn upon Peter, bubble the boy. They start turn, shut everybody in circle. Go right, roll. So I just stand on there because I feel a bullet go through by head. But I feel like it come through. So I said to myself, say, no, something since I can't trust, I now move. I can wait till they move off. Because when them shut, they never move. Then wait a couple minutes, she said nobody no move, because nobody never make a sound. So I said to myself, say, wait, everybody must have found dead like me. So I wait until I hear like bike start up. I turn the light, I see Peter in a pool of blood, Fred in a pool of blood, Doc in a pool of blood. Doc Brown was already dead. Peter Tosh died that night in hospital. Free Eye died three days later, and the other four were hospitalized with various injuries. Where did you receive shots? One in the head. One in the back and one through the leg. Do you believe robbery was the motive of the shooting? No, they just used that as an excuse because they couldn't just <clears throat> come and make people feel that they were sent. I don't care, I know they were sent. Because the order that they came in, that Peter, you're there tonight, me come for kill you. Them come for kill me. Them words they will never forget. Peter Tosh the stepping razor, the rebel, the toughest, was given a state funeral made possible by those whom he so uncompromisingly opposed. He finally succumbed to the violence of the concrete jungle which nurtured him. Like Bob Marley and Carlton Barrett before him, he could not quite shake off the culture of blood and fire which surrounds reggae music. He sang about it practiced it himself, at times idolized it. Even in death, Tosh was authentic. Peter Tosh was one of the musical giants of the last 20 years. He was a part of the original Wailers, which consisted of Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Bonnie Whaler. When the group became known as Bob Marley and the Wailers, because Bob Marley began to have individual star status, and eventually broke up, it is a tribute to the star qualities of Peter Tosh, that he too was able, in addition to Bob Marley, to make the international music scene as an outstanding reggae artist. When Bob Marley died, Peter Tosh inherited his crown, so to speak, as king of reggae, and he was widely proclaimed across the world.